Where there is light, there is dark. Where there is good, there is also evil. And where there's Jedi, there's the Sith. Hey everyone, Ewan here for What Culture Star Wars, and I thought today we could dive into a topic that I've always found really fascinating, and that is the birth of the Sith. The dichotomy between the Sith and the Jedi has been at the very core of Star Wars ever since its very beginning back in 1977, when Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi faced off against Sith Lord Darth Vader. Since then, we've met numerous members of the Dark Side, from Emperor Palpatine to Darth Maul, and seen more of the Jedi-Sith conflict that's taken place over a period of millennia. So much so, in fact, that it's almost impossible to imagine the Jedi without the Sith. The Force, as Luke explains, needs balance, but where did this conflict actually begin? The Jedi Order can be traced back for over 25,000 years, at least according to Star Wars Legends, but they were around for eons before their biggest ever rivals broke onto the scene. It wasn't until around 6,900 BBY, that's before Battle of Yavin, that the Sith would rise, and it was born from one of the Jedi's lowest, darkest points. Around 7,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, there came a period known as the Hundred Years Darkness. Cracks started to appear in the Jedi Order when a section of the Knights started experimenting with the Force and how it could be used, pushing the boundaries further than ever before. These rogue Jedi discovered that they could harness the Force to bend life itself and to create new species too, and that only by tapping into the dark side could true mastery be achieved. Now, obviously, the Jedi Council were against such practices, and the rogue Jedi were sent out into exile, thus beginning a war that would engulf the galaxy for 100 years. These rogues were led by someone called Ajunta Pal, a member of the Jedi Order who rose to the rank of Master before his studies of alchemy took him to the dark side of the Force. During this period, numerous conflicts were fought throughout the galaxy, with the Dark Jedi constantly being pushed back by the light and coming back with new, more deadly and fearsome creations each time, only to then suffer further defeat. Eventually, after defeat on the planet Corbos, despite Paul himself slaying a dozen Jedi during the conflict, the Dark Jedi were all rounded up and blasted out into hyperspace by the Republic. The Exiles eventually found themselves on the planet known as Karaban, where lived a species known as the Sith. You can kind of see where this is going now. These humanoid creatures had bone spores and tentacles on their faces and were highly attuned to the dark side of the Force. Led by King Hakagram Grouch. Hakagram Grouch. Hakagram Grouch. Wow. Star Wars, man. You don't make this easy. Led by King Hakagram. Hakag. Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan, Shaka Khan, Haka Gram, Shaka Khan. Led by King Haka Gram Grouch, the Sith initially resisted the efforts of the exiled Jedi to settle on their homeworld, but were finally won over by the advanced technology and clear skill they exhibited in using the Force. The Dark Jedi known as Pal managed to collude with Grouch's shadow hand and eventually slay the King himself, at which point the Dark Jedi became worshipped as a godlike species on the planet. Paul then assumed the title of the very first Dark Lord of the Sith, with his followers interbreeding with the Sith race on Korriban, thus creating the very first empire that he'd expand into new worlds, and would span centuries and fight against the Republic and Jedi time and time again. But how much of this is still canon? Well, as I'm sure you already know, with Disney buying Lucasfilm back in 2012 came the Great Expanded Universe Purge, whereby decades of stories from across novels, comics, and video games were wiped out from the current canon and shifted into the Star Wars Legends bracket, with the company intent on building up their own new canon. That has, however, included cherry-picking elements from the old expanded universe, hence why someone like Grand Admiral Thrawn has been reintroduced in Star Wars Rebels, and why Solo brought back the martial art Taris Cassie, plus countless other things that keep being integrated piece by piece with every single year. Among these re-canonized elements and stories is the 100 Year Darkness, which gets a brief mention in the 2015 comic book showdown on the Smuggler's Moon Part 2. Ajunta Paul, meanwhile, isn't a name that's in canon at this moment in time, but the quote-unquote unidentified Jedi Rogue is, which means that, for all intents and purposes, the character remains the very first Sith. 
The first Sith Lord actually named in canon is Darth Bane, courtesy of the Clone Wars, who'd have the greatest impact upon the dark side since the Sith's formation by introducing the Rule of Two, that being that they could only be a master and an apprentice in the Sith Order, but with new Star Wars stories working more of things like the Old Republic back into canon, maybe eventually Paul will be reinstated as well. We have the Acolyte to look forward to, of course, and I'm sure more secrets of the Sith will be unlocked in that series. And that was the story of the very first Sith Lord. Do you want to learn more about the origins of the Sith in the new canon? Let us know in the comments below and please don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it and to subscribe to What Culture Star Wars so you don't miss another upload going forward. I've been Ewan and may the force be with you. Bye!